this way. A spider, a creature, walking towards her. It was a woman, but oddly enough, and it's replicated in church places, the story is, different people, I dare say, walking towards her was a, 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 a gentleman, a gentleman, with his feet below the surface of the ground. There's a theory about this in such matters that because of the ground level rising with resurfacing, the original hosts were walking perhaps seven to eight inches to a foot lower than us, and they still do that. We came down towards us, stopped where we are now, and disappeared through that door. Now then, that door appeared there in the 70s. There used to be a public right away go through there, coming out behind the town hall, uh, behind the, the, to the Gwyn Hall. And behind the Gwyn Hall, stacked up were gravestones that had been taken up from various areas in the town as they uh, uh, re re regenerate the place, because much of this area was covered in cemetery, um, certainly in the 1700s to 1800s. Through there, now Mark Spencer's appeared here in the 30s. This area of land that it occupies today has had many incarnations. It was a soap factory, it's been a grocer's shop, it's also, it also housed the Neath um, Philosophical Society's observatory. Um, people are amazed when they learn that there was an observatory in Neath all those years ago. That ceased in 1923 and it became the Neath Antiquarian Society. More significantly, it was also the site of a Baptist chapel. And that Baptist chapel uh, soaked the land in 1866 and relocated to London Road. The chapel is still there to this day and still being worshipped there. During those times, the Church of England wouldn't allow the internment of unbaptized children. And the Baptist Union had enough of this and we we'll have our own cemetery. And their own cemetery was right there in that wall. Animal market <laughs> Alongside where those buildings now stand was the infamous pig hall of Neath, where animals would be uh, sold on the market days. Naturally, the people in the farming communities used to congregate in Neath then, certainly from all over the Neath and Dillis Valley areas, but probably further afield as well. And of course, the public houses were much, much used. That particular public house is much, much haunted. It's appeared on an American uh, television program uh, because of the activity that takes place up there. There's activity in the basement, and the basements go right out into the middle of the road, further than the middle of the road. They're immense. And in the bar area and upstairs, uh, different noises, different things are seen, including animals. And this is what attracted the attention of the American filmmakers. And they lodged over there for a month. And concentrated their activity in there, full of instruments and goodness knows what. They did record movement. They recorded orbs by the dozen. 
and orbs are supposed to be um, the, 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 the spirit entities of ghosts. church place. The town hall there was built in 1816 and many of the rooms there, funny things go on, lights come on and off, things like this. The things are moved, tables are turned over, chairs are put on top of tables too. Things have been seen coming out of there and significantly on one occasion, and this replicates in a way what I told you in Queen Street, to be the person walking with their feet below the surface of the ground, coming out of that building and walking up here. Now this person was dressed from behind in Edwardian clothes. So that dates us uh, 1902 onward. And walked up here, this person was transfixed. Terrified, because it was not there when they entered the street. And they naturally were, couldn't understand the fact that she couldn't see its feet. And it walked up all the way and disappeared into that building there the three-storey building, which is now a solicitor's office. And it also was its first Turkish bath in its day. And it's also at some stage in its life been used for holding prisoners um, in, as a police station. Because underneath there, and, the, the, and the, the basements come right out to the church wall. They've still, they've still got the heavy barred windows, uh, the, the heavy door with the people, and a massive lock and the solicitor when I made a will there last year he said that the girls are not happy about going downstairs since reading the story in your book he said you stronger language than that but anyway he said you're not wrong I locked up here at night he said and try opening the door and he took me down the basement because he checked it it was heavy, but you could, and you'd bang it too, and you'd throw the catch, and there is no way that catch would release itself without physical force. And yet, Mr. Phillips said, when I'm locked up at night, then the last one in the building, then I go out, and I come in in the morning, the door is wide open. Duke of Wellington, called Tony, and inside the Duke it's dark, 
Very goes through the bin in there to go. Very and he's got several ghosts in there. He's giving me a tour of the place. They too are their basements. Um, but nevertheless, he's got a ghost in there that he's actually given a name to. And he calls it the captain. And the captain frequents uh, a couple of the rooms. Doesn't cause much trouble as long as you acknowledge the captain. Uh, on one occasion, when the, uh, they have groups in there. Tony? Yeah. They have groups in there. And, <laughs> and on this little stage they got there, this guy was decrying the fact that the bloody load of rubbish, ghosts and captains, not a nonsense. And he was singing, and the microphone, and uh, people were watching this, rose up and hit him on the head. And that upset him. It really did, because he knew that couldn't have lifted up and, and struck me. Another chaff was calling it a lot of nonsense and the captain denying the captain's <laughs> existence. And he went to the toilet. There was no one in the toilet. He admits this himself. When he went in, there was no one in there. And he got beaten up in there. Uh, something was raining blows on his head and he drew blood and made marks on him. And he came out quite shattered and, and said, something has attacked me. He said, there's nothing in there. And Tony said, shouldn't you upset the captain and should you? <laughs>